So that capsule that we saw in Spain, will they continue building another one like that, or is it sort of a wait and see how this one that we saw goes? No, we actually already have uh, more ordered. So there's more coming. How many more coming? Well, you know, we hope we have several more in the future, but right now we have another two. Another two in, pro in the works. Mm -hmm. And would those also go to Toulouse then for testing, or could those go anywhere? Well, so um, you need to do the integration and the optimization. And in Toulouse, we, we will have the first complete full-scale prototype, if you want so. So that's our R&D center. So we're able to put the capsule inside the system, um, prep everything before it then moves over into the commercial systems. So when would we be able to actually ride in this capsule? You then? and me? Yes. Well, um, we'll see probably earlier than you would think. Earlier than we would think. But um, the commercial lines we expect to have done um, approximately in three years. Approximately three years from 2019 today. Um, yeah, well, so we are planning in the Emirates, we still have a target date of 2020 um, for the first part. And, um, but again, you know, that's the first commercial line. You and me, if you sign a waiver, we can probably arrive a little bit earlier. A little bit earlier. That's, I mean, that's a year from now. Yeah. What, what is the process when you say sign a waiver? Talk about some of the requirements that would be needed to be in place before we can actually get in a hyperloop. So the big hurdle, right, um, is actually the regulatory framework. It's a hyperloop is something completely new. It doesn't exist today. So it's not an airplane and it's not a train. So there are no laws that regulate it. And of course, you need to make sure that the safety standards in place, um, that everything, you know, is tested and you have your safety records so it just takes a little bit to get that done and of course you have to work with gov you have to work with governments around the world to create these safety standards we have been working with um, TÜV Süd already and have presented our the regulatory framework if you want so the proposal we're now working with the different countries that already have agreements with us and um, are trying to get their feedback in order to implement that We've been working with Munich Re, the largest reinsurance company in the world, and um, they actually said that they're able to insure our technology, which is a very important step when you're moving into commercialization. Um, so, you know, but that's really what's necessary now in order to have worldwide adoption and in order to be able to use the systems, you, you, you need the regulation in place. Still watching? Perfect. Click here to watch another great video from CNBC International. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.